my name is Gerni Visser. Uh, I started as a grad here at the start of the year. And um, I remember my first day, you know, chatting to my tech lead, just hearing what's going on. And I chatted a bit about what I would be doing this first while. And um, I can't quite remember exactly how the conversation went, but it was something like this, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I had no idea what, what a coverage, increasing coverage even meant. So my first course of action was just figuring out what it even meant to increase the coverage of, of, uh, of unit tests. Um, so uh, increasing the coverage, it's, it's a report you generate on code that, you, that you're unit testing, and it's basically just a metric of the percentage of code that your unit test is actually testing. So um, I think a good analogy is think of an editor of a book, right? They're reading through the book, searching for errors, searching for something that doesn't make sense, but they're only reading every other page. I mean, they're going to be missing errors, right? So um, in that case, their coverage metric will probably be like 50%. They're only looking through 50% of the, of the possible error space. So in the perfect world, you would want a coverage uh, a metric of 100%. Um, so yeah, I uh, started looking through the code and after two weeks, I was about 10% done. And um, pretty quick, I got sick of unit tests and it got a bit boring and tedious to write a unit test. So I started thinking about how I can optimize this process, how I could um, make it more efficient, just make life for myself a bit easier. And um, one afternoon, I got this epiphany, this, this, this idea that I thought is, is brilliant. I thought this would change the IT industry forever, and no one has ever thought about it. I thought I would use ChatGPT. <laughs> so um, my first approach was something like this, right? Um, I just wrote up a little mock API, a little Python fast API with a bunch of um, use cases, like uh, getting the current data, adding numbers, um, checking if a word is a palindrome, uh, reversing words, a bunch of different use cases that I would use to check to see if ChatGPT is able to write proper unit tests for this and to get a decent coverage, um, uh, uh, unit test coverage. Um, so yeah, I wrote a bunch of these endpoints just to test different things. And um, then I just wrote a little script that would query the OpenAI API, right? It'll give it the code and it'll give them a few instructions of, of to, 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 to write some unit tests. And this is basically the, the results I got, right? So we can see here it's running the unit tests now. Um, okay, okay, just give me one second. This is just the wrong script, sorry. Um, see. Okay, so um, it basically generates a, 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 a coverage report. Um, it generates a, a unit test, and then um, the, the, the unit test is then the unit test that it then generates. Basically, it doesn't work. It gets a coverage of about 40%, maybe 50%, and a lot of the time it fails. So um, this is a major issue, obviously, because we want a coverage report of about 80 or 85%, and this doesn't work. So I thought my um, initial attempt was just flawed, and I thought that this idea wouldn't work. Sorry, if you guys can just give me one second. I apologize, I just want to find that little script, otherwise the rest of the demo is going to be a bit lackluster. Okay. Python run. I'm so sorry, guys. Classic, classic, classic demo digest is right. <laughs> um, okay. Python single shots.
Okay, great. Okay, sorry, we're back on track. Sorry, guys, for that. Um, so this is basically what ChatGPT would, would generate then just from a single short approach, right? We would give him the code, we would give him the um, the context we want, and this is the code that he generated. So this code was just then written into our little test file, which is here. And um, now we can run the actual unit test. So the unit test is being run now. And we can see, okay, well, perfect. It actually it ran. There was no errors, which is good. Um, but we can see we only got a coverage of 53%, which means only 53% of the code was actually tested, which is, yeah, that's not good. We, we In an ideal world, you want 100% test coverage. Um, so yeah, 53% is a bit lackluster. So this is the major issue we have when generating code with ChatGPT, right? Deterministic. It, um, there's, there's no way to, to, to guarantee that it'll give you responses that firstly runs or that it will generate unit tests that actually test new uh, use cases. Um, so this is sort of the idea that I wanted to, to, to tackle and to see if there's a way to write code, to generate code with ChatGPT that actually um, you know, is reliable and that we can guarantee uh, increases um, our output. So um, this is when I came acro across an approach called recursive agent chaining. So this is a, an approach where you query ChatGPT and ask it to write code, but you also include a code runner, which actually then runs the code and gives output. And then that output is passed and it's modified and it then modifies the next query that will be given to ChatGPT. And this happens in a circular fashion um, to hopefully iteratively uh, allow ChatGPT to actually figure out where it's going wrong and what it needs to improve on. Um, so I used this, this general concept and came up with this high level overview of how I wanted to solve this issue. So I am using a test runner, which is just the test library that, should, that you're currently using. In my case, it's just PyTest. So this will actually run the unit test and it'll generate the coverage report, right? So that coverage report will then be sent to the coverage parser. This will check at the, uh, will look at the coverage report and it'll try to decide what still needs to be tested, um, what is wrong, if there was any errors. It just tries to get some general more uh, information out of, the, out of the test that was just run. And then it gets sent to the prompt builder. So the prompt builder is meant to modify the current prompt that was used with this addi additional information it got from the, from the coverage parser. And then this new adjusted prompt is sent to the AI caller or just your chat GPT interface or whatever, and um, a new test is generated. And then that new test, the code that that new test generates gets sent to the test runner. And this process runs in a cycle until you get the desired result. In our case being, we have a test coverage of 85%. Um, so I can quickly show you guys what that looks like. So I'm just going to run this thing. So we saw now with our first um, iteration, we got a coverage of about 45%, right? So that is where it's going to start off with and then it's going to try to iteratively improve that it's going to see where it can 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 uh, um, you know improve where there was issues where there was unit tests that that tests um the same thing and uh, we can already see okay it already improved it's already at 53 percent 54 percent and when we actually look at that little test file um we can see that the uh, um Yeah, okay, so it is improving, it is running. We should be able to see in this test file, as this is generating new code and it's trying new things, it's actually just gonna update this file live before us. So let's see, okay, they just generated some new code and then it's gonna go through all of the previous tests that were generated to see if there's any duplication happening, anything um, you know, where unit test is, is, is testing the same code twice. Um, so yeah, we can see it's still running. Let's just see where it's at now. Okay, we can see a coverage. Okay, so we're at 71% now. So um, yeah, literally this thing just tries to, to, to generate new unit tests, see what's wrong, see where it can improve, modify the prompt, and then send it back to ChatGPT to try again, um, which I think is, is pretty cool. Now, I know one of the major issues about this is, is how do we use this in industry, right? We can't give a client's code to ChatGPT or whatever. I mean, there's privacy concerns regarding that. Um, I'm going to address that point in a bit and show you something cool in NFT that I think is pretty cool. Um, the other thing that I think would be really cool for using a system like this is integrating it into your CI CD pipeline. 
Um, so say you have a component library and you, you modify this library and this thing will automatically go and check do you still have the desired test coverage across all your components that you want to? And if not, then perhaps try to generate some, some extra um, unit tests to test those edge cases which the, which the developer missed. Um, so yeah, this thing is still running. Okay, we're at 83% now. It should stop at 85. So, okay, it's at, at 85 now. Okay, awesome, and it stopped. So we can see now it generated a bunch of, bunch of unit tests. Um, so that code that we wrote should be covered a lot better. So we can just run that coverage report again, just make sure that our results is as we suspect them to be. Awesome, okay, cool. So we generated 23 unit tests and our coverage now is 87%, which, yeah, um, I think when you scale this thing up to a component library or two or 300 components, then um, automatically, you know, generating unit tests and, and, and increasing them would be pretty cool. Um, so just getting back to that issue we had about the, the giving our data over to a, to a, a third party, um, companies like Meta actually provide free open source models. And I have downloaded one called um, Code Llama onto my laptop itself. And theoretically, I'm not going to do it now, but I could disconnect from the internet and actually run the same script running on a large language model running on my computer. Um, so it is possible to run a server on-prem um, and actually, you know, run this entire pipeline on, on your own computer while keeping your data safe and secure. Um, this method is way slower. I mean, my computer doesn't have a dedicated graphics card or anything, so it's way slower and the result is not as um, effective as a chat GPT-4 model. Um, but there is some super smart models, super nice models, which if you have the hardware infrastructure, you can actually run it on-prem on your own services. So, um, yeah, that is basically what I wanted to share with you guys today. Um, thank you so much for your time. Um, this project was, was inspired and I used a lot of the stuff that is available um, on an open source pro project called Codium. Um, so if you guys want to go and check that out, it's really cool. And the um, Forks branch where I did this entire demo, I just modified a few things for this demo's sake. Um, it is all there if you guys want to have a look. 